this tutorial i'm going to be teaching you how i made this beautiful pencil gown with waist dart and flutter sleeve and i'm going to be using the main body block i drafted in one of my previous videos if you are yet to subscribe to this channel kindly do so and don't forget to hit the notification bell to enjoy more of my videos thank you I've placed my pattern paper and the fabric. So this fabric has um, some design on it. But the flower portion I want it to be at the lower part of the gown. So this is my main body blocks. I'm just going to extend it to the length of the blouse. So I'm going to transfer all the lines so I can draft the exact style that I need. So I'm including half inch seam all through and the shoulder slants and I'm going to increase that with the hand hole This main body block has just one inch for his. So I'll just add one more for seam allowance. to transfer all the lines and the notches so I can build my dance by the time I lift it up. So this is my hip line, my waist line, bust line and chest line. Right now I remove the pins I'll stand this line straight to the end of the gown. And we will have the lines just now. The first line. This one. I'm not going to be using the waist back and the side that's on this. So the same measurement I have here. That's exactly 12 inches. That's true for you. So at the end, for this gown, I just added one inch for the end. Coming around, just one. So right at the end, because the pencil gown, I'm going to come in by one point five. Now connect this one and five to the hip line. I'm just going to pop out the main fabric. Right, can give me access. I have measurements. 
much. So with this, I'm done cutting the main fabric that I need just for the front. So I'm going to be altering the neck. For this, for the main body blocks, the standard measurement is 3 by 3 for the front neck width and neck depth. So I'm going to be altering it by extending the neck width to 5 inches. So when I say 5, I'm going to be cutting at 4 and a half. By the time I join, I hemmed it, or turning it with the lining or the facing. It's going to end up at 5 inches. And for the lower part for the front, I'll make 5. So here I'll be having this 4 and a half, 5. By the time I am through sewing, I'll be having 5 and 5 and a half here. So I'm going to the neck and taking it down. I like them. Um, wash That's for that. I'll remove what I did here. For the neck width is standard for both front and back. But the depth can be different. So this is the chest line, this is the bust line. The bust line is seven inches divided by two is three and a half. Come here. Connect the lines. So to keep my dad right on the boss line, I come down by one point five. That's the starting point. And for the front, I go up by two and a half from the hip line. That's the slope of my dad. I'm taking half inch on both sides for my dad. And I'll connect it. Like I said, in the body, main body blocks trapped in. The dart for the back is usually longer than that of the front. So, I'm done with that, so I'm now good to cut. So, just at the hemming line, fold it in to so cut. this the other way around as you can see we have the whole full front so I want to get an image of my dad on the other side so I fold it so I'm just going to that here so I can have some Transparent image on the other side of the tent. So it's very faint. I'm just going to give it up to make it more legible. Though this depends on some types of fabric, the images may not show if you try that in some fabrics, but some it will be faintly visible, just like this. So in case it's too yours and it doesn't show, just try and measure it out. Get your pattern and your back. And then, so I'm true with this, I'm true for the front. So I'm just going to place the left of our fabric to cut the back. I place my pattern block for the back on the fabric. 
just like I did for the front. I'm going to be doing that for the back too. So I'm going to have sewing allowance on the shoulder slants, the ham hole, the side, the fabric. Just half inch sewing allowance for the, for the shoulder slants. And that's the ham hole. For those of us that might be watching this for the first time, I'm going to drop a link on how to drop a basic body plug in the comment section below so that we can know how we got to this stage. I'm just using this to fulfill the promise on that I made that I was going to do a video on this pencil. Okay. So for the side, same. I'm just adding one inch, one inch sewing allowance all the, just one. Usually say the curve side of the ham hole just below the ham pit is curvy. It's not straight as what I was used to do. So for this I'm just including half inch just one inch for my zip allowance. If you know you can't very beginner if you can maintain one increase it by one and a half like how we did the main drafting of the main body plates. So I'm just getting all my notches. Just going to transfer all the lines so I can draft my darts, my part darts. And this line is my then to waist line my post line my chest line and of course my hip line this is my waist line so I'm going to remove all the pins Waistline, my back length to waistline, my post line, and my chest line. So for my, don't forget to include it just one inch. I mark the point for my zip, just one inch for the zip allowance. I'm marking it out so I can know where to place my dart from. Okay. 
I said I'm only working with one inch, one inch rather, for the hem and allowance. Same measurement you have is 12.7, transfer that to 2.7. So from the original line, you have to come in by one and a half. Connect it to the heat line. I'm going to cut it out so I can have more space Just like we did for the back, okay, for the front, this 3x3 three three, I'm going to increase it neck width. This 3x3 three three, I'm just going to increase it. And connect it to the 1 inch below. Notice this one I didn't feel the side that just like I said initial that it's not all styles must carry that side that so before cutting right through just want to put my dot so this my my mark three and you know this one line get half inch on both sides look at that the star starts from the chest line come down by one inch from the chest line and from the peak line go up by two inches and connect all the lines Can either fold it over as we did to get the dart shape. Is that mirror it uh, mirror shape? Or measure it out and roll it through to sewing. So I'll be holding this dart at my sewing. So I'm good to cut now, just like we did. Fold it. This is advisable because by the time you want to 
so in the hemline. You don't have issue at the hemline here. So I'm just going to snip cut the tree. I'm going to look on the back. Okay, one for the zipper allowance. So I just see this lamp right on this screen. I just want to cut it out. That's the center back slant. This is very painful to deal with zip punch. So I'm just going to replicate this for the exact shape for the lining. The line is just going to be a little bit like three to four inches shorter than the main fabric. So I'm done cutting the lining. So I've cut it exactly the same shape, just for the back. So for me, I choose to just reduce it by one inch at the hem side. So by the time I'm turning it at sewing, it will just go a little bit in. So and for this is the front. I did likewise the same. So I reduce it just by one inch as well. So we can go over to the sleeve. The bodies are ready to go over. Right now I'm going to be cutting a flutter sleeve using freehand method. I folded my fabric into two and I'm going to fold it in a cone shape. Which means I'm cutting the two sleeves together. That's four fold. Bearing in mind this is where it starts, it ends. So the sleeve length is at whatever I'm cutting, I don't want this C wave design in it. So I'm just going to come in, stop around here, together with the sleeve length. So I start from the top of this fold, fold it in a cone shape, mark, marking six inches. Yeah. Six inches. Connect it on a straight line. Okay. My sleeve length is 13. Together with the hemming allowance, half inch to join to the body at the top and half for the hemming at the lower part is 14. So right from that 6 inches, mark 14 all through. Now pick up, you can fold more than this depending on how much fabric you have to use. So I'm just picking up the front pattern of my bodies. Remember I'm going to be I have half inch sewing allowance for the shoulder. From that half inch, together with the sewing allowance, just measure by twisting your tape right through and stop exactly at that half inch, I have 9 inches so for that 9 inches I'm going to repeat it around here but it's going to be in an S shape
whatever I'm trying must be on that line. I have ten ways. Good. So it means you want a complete start from any side at the upper part or take it in to give you exactly line. Is now and we have so with this we can cut Take the side through. So I have two slips. So very easy, straightforward. I'm not going to be using any lining on this. It's like interlock it with an interlock overlock it rather with an interlocking machine or you fold it to the fold or you turn it with the bias at the lower part then join it to the body safe. So we go right over to the sewing aspect. So we are going over to the line to the sewing. So the first thing first I'm starting with my front bodies. I'll take it to the machine, hold my darts this way and I'll start my stitches from here go right on this line and stop here I'll repeat the same process here and I'll do the same for the line I stitched the two stats for the front and that of the lining I've done that of the back too the back that's the next thing now is to place all the front right side to right side place it right side to right side the neck will mix so we are going to go ahead and stitch the neck with half an inch round When I stitch it, I'll come back and show us the next process. I've gone ahead to stitch it with cut half an inch round. So I'm just going to place a snip round so that I snip away much. You go to the same Make sure you are not snipping into your stitch. Then go ahead and reduce the seam. That's it. You choose. Wait. I'm going to take it to the machine. Then turn all your seam, all the seams to the lining side and I'm going to run an edge stitch. You can either do a top stitch or an edge stitch, they both do the same work. But for me, I choose to edge stitch. Just going to stitch at the edge round to hold it firm. I've done that and I've given it a good press. The next thing is turn it the other way around, right side facing right side still. Then take the two hands together 
and sew it with quarter of an inch straight down. Then turn your seam to the side of the lining and head stitch or top stitch as well. I'm through with that. By the time you turn the M, M side and you top stitch, it automatically pushes the lining inside. When it pushes it up, it automatically gives you an edge like this. So the next thing to do is to still turn the fabric right side facing right side and put all my seams inward placing all my seams inward so i just take the two edges this way the lining and the fabric i'll sew it down to the hem side with quarter of an inch and i'll repeat the same process for the back by placing the right side facing each other turn the neck snip it turn, turn, turn all your lining all your seams to the lining side and stitch it then push the lining to meet the fabric at the M side sew it in with quarter of an inch turn all the seams to the side of the lining and stitch it as well then fold in sew in at the zipper side with quarter of an inch here then at the seam the side seam also with quarter of an inch i'll take it right through and complete all this process for both front and back i've done all the inner sewing for the side seam you can see how neatly it looks on both sides and the hem that's for the front and here is for the back i've done that quite the same you can see how it's neatly sewn and for the two sides of the back place the two sides together and with this you'll be working with your measurements remember when we were cutting we placed just one inch for the sewing allowance so by the time i was sewing the sides together when i was stitching it in i took quarter of an inch on the edge of the sides to turn in the lining and the fabric so i'll be left with three quarter so i marked all through three quarter and i stitched it down now to do this you use your basting stitch the basting stitch is the biggest stitch on your machine for example if you are working with um, a black head machine your basting stitch is the number seven some they will write number six while if you are working with industrial straight sewing you have your basting stitch on number five so just run measure your zip zipper length for here i did 18 and a half i run the basting stitch you follow your center back slant while doing that and i locked it there and from the end i mean side i came in by seven inches that's it's going to have a slit because the pencil's gown and for you to be able to have access for free movement you need to slit the lower part so i came in by seven inches from the hemming side in by seven inches so i did a reverse stitch there too so i locked the in between lines so i gave it a good press you go take it to your ironing table iron it well open the seam and iron it so i'll be eating this open and i'm going to put my zipper with now with this you, you are good to go to fix your zipper i've gone ahead to join the shoulder seam for this side so i'm just going to show you how i achieve that you place the fabric right side facing right side and take the lining of the back and probably the front use it to wrap the side 
taking the four together and run a straight stitch here. I've gone ahead to stitch the two shoulder seams and I've stitched the side seam as well. I'm turning it out and see how it's neatly sewn beautifully well. That's the front and the back. I've written the seam. So I'll just go right ahead to open this side and fix the zipper. Then for the sleeve, there's one of it. Fold it this way from the edge, mark 1.5 or 1 1.2 rather, one and a quarter, and stitch it straight down. And I'll go ahead and join it to this bodice of the gown. So I hope you've been able to find this tutorial very interesting and helpful. For any question regarding this tutorial or any of our tutorial, you can drop your question in the comment section below and we shall be glad to answer your questions. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever I upload any video. Thank you so much for watching.